So if you don't socialize the puppy, then you will be, end up likely with a behavior problem. Uh, things like bite inhibition have to be established when the puppy is young um, so that they will have a soft mouth so that an adult dog, uh, when they're an adult dog, um, if, they really, if they do bite, they're not going to break any skin. Another thing that has to be established is, is resource guarding. Resource guarding for a lot of people don't know, a lot of it starts within the litter. So the way that the puppies are fed in a litter is really important. If they're not fed on a regular schedule or if they're hungry and they're fed in all in one dish and the puppies are all fighting for their food um, quite early on, um, then that can start resource guarding. The same as if they don't have enough enrichment and they haven't learned like, actually, in fact, when you have, uh, if you give puppies toys, you need to give them more toys than there is puppies so that if one puppy takes a toy, then they just go over and take another toy. And they're actually positively reinforced for giving up that toy. The same with the bowl, you should have more bowls of food than you do with than you do puppies. But that's really hard for a lot of breeders to even think about doing because in fact, it takes time. And puppies are hard work, puppies should be hard work to rear. Noise phobia is one of my uh, the saddest things I get contacted about noise phobia really there's a lot of research that says that you need to expose your dog to noises and sounds very early on even before they can hear the sound vibrations and things like that if they don't experience it from a young age then they're likely to become fearful fearful of it and then if your dog has multiple noise phobia triggers then it can be really really hard to correct because unless you know what the problem is then you cannot fix it and when it's sudden noises and sudden sounds it becomes really hard to predict um, so actually at, at the moment in time if anybody has a puppy exposing them to the fireworks that are going on is um, really helpful for their, their socialization. So this is a little bit of video of some puppies at three days old because people, I don't know if you can hear that and it's a little bit loud. And already at three days old they're, I think, they're quite advanced. You know, even though they cannot see and they cannot hear, they're still very much able to orientate themselves during, through their sense of smell. And also, um, you can, uh, through their sense of smell, and they're able to move themselves around. But people go, well, why would I socialize? Or why would I do anything with a puppy this young? This is actually when it should start. Their tactile sensation is very developed at this point. So you can do things with puppies and even get them used to different uh, textures, handling in different positions, and you can do all sorts of things even at this age. And you should be handling puppies at this age. You should be handling puppies from day, from almost birth. Um, so they can develop. This is a big thing that I love to talk about, early neurological stimulation. So genetics um, makes up about 35% of what, what your dog is gonna be like, and everything else is, uh, management training and nutrition when we take puppies and we do things called this called it's called a super dog program a lot of the time and it's early neurological stimulation and it's a series of exercises that you can do with puppies from about three days old till about uh, 15 days old or even longer if you want to um, at, at some point they obviously become quite difficult because they can become big you can't just hold them on one hand but it's putting the dog in certain positions every day in a very welfare friendly way and putting them on different surfaces and getting them used to different sounds and different noises and different positions um, so that they become stimulated by them and enriched by them and there's a huge amount of study on this and you can get increased uh, improved cardiovascular performance, stronger heartbeat, stronger adrenal glands, more tolerance to stress, which is my big thing, which I love. You know, your dog is not, is, is not going to be so freaked about stress and greater resistance to disease. You know, and this even this sudden movement of being picked up out of the air and cuddled or moved or uh, transported anywhere is a big thing for a dog. It means that there's a lot of connections in terms of a lot of research done that if you move a dog when they're very young suddenly that they can actually cope with change very well in the rest of their life or sudden movements or sudden sounds or sudden things like that so this is something that i'd love to see that was put into i, I know there's a few rescues that do it already um but all rescues or anyone raising a litter of puppies um i think it's a really really amazing thing and you'll get such a good um developed socially uh calm what we call a bomb proof dog so um i'm a big fan of that so this is the critical period so this is this uh, what you're kind of looking for in the birth to eight weeks old you're looking to noises in the house get them used to learn as they can learn bite inhibition before 
eight weeks old, I'll always be able to recognize a puppy that hasn't really been well socialized before they went to their first home or hasn't been handled because they'll bite much harder. The bite inhibition is, is really bad. The mouthing is really bad. They're really, really kind of intense and they can be a much needier dog. They're, they're, not as, they're not as calm. And then from kind of eight to 12 weeks old, your dog needs to meet about a hundred different people. Uh, and they have to be positive experiences. Um, you need to get them used to noises again. And then even at this age, even if it conflicts with your vaccination schedule, if you have a smaller breed of dog, I would often encourage people to carry their dog on a walk. So carry their dog on a walk. You don't have to put them on the ground. Have loads of people over. Oh, oh COVID, you know, exemption for that at the moment. But um, carry your puppy. And if their puppy sees a person on the street, give them a piece of chicken. If they see a bus, give them a piece of chicken. If they see another dog, give them a piece of chicken. And you can do this all while your puppy is really, really tiny and get them set up for the time Then you can bring them out and you can mix them, you can socialize them uh, with strange dogs and that kind of thing in the park and people. You're getting, you're preparing them. You're setting them up for success so that when they see a man with a beard or a man with a high vis or a lady with an umbrella, they go, oh, I like that because I get chicken when I see her or him or whatever. So when the puppy, the, the, so the window for socialization starts to close then after that, it doesn't mean that you stop socializing. It just means that your dog starts to go into their fear period and they start to get worried and they start to get anxious about things. So that's when you should stop to watch your dog. And if they pause and if they're looking at something and if they look a bit shied away for something, then this is a time where if you haven't socialized your dog enough, this is the time you need to work with it because this is the time that the puppy is going to be so much easier to fix than it will be even from six, seven, eight months of age. Um, this is the kind of time that you want to, you can really, really change behavior much, much faster. And the longer you leave it, the longer it takes. So then you move into adolescence and all that kind of thing. So moving on, because I want to get obviously onto the point of how do we fix a dog? I am actually going to talk about that, but how do we fix a dog who's fearful? But I think it's important to know the background. Why do dogs uh, growl, snap or bite? The main reason is they're scared. They're very scared. They're very uncomfortable in a social situation when they can't escape. So especially on a lead and especially in a home. In a home, they also can or a room, they also are trapped. So they, they're already panicked. So by the time a dog growls or snarls or does any snaps or bites, they already feel that they have no alternative. They have no other get out strategy. They cannot cope. They cannot flight, fight or flight. They cannot flight. They have to, uh, and they're doing it as, um, that's why most people get bitten on the hands on the arms because it's people reaching towards a dog to pet them and they're, they're telling them no, stay away and the person is ignoring them. So on the, the picture there you see that's called the ladder of aggression and it's a wonderful, I think it was Ian Dunbar who created the ladder of aggression and it goes from green where the dog would start giving you warning signals where they the distance increasing signals telling you to keep a distance and it goes right, right, right up to biting. So there's a lot of steps before a dog will get to to bite you and quite often um, we miss them. Where I always laugh because we expect a dog to learn our language, live in our homes, do what we say, to learn loads of different words, loads of different mannerisms and then nobody actually takes the time to learn any dog body language. Um, dog body language, our dogs are talking, they're communicating with us all the time. And I have to say, I've worked a lot, a lot with aggression cases and I'm thankfully I've never been bitten, nor would I need to be bitten, nor do I need to see a dog in a muzzle because I can speak dog and I can communicate with a dog to a certain level. I can read their body language so I know where they're uncomfortable and dogs don't want to bite people. They just don't. 